Did you know that canola oil is repurposed motor oil? I know that sounds a little bit crazy because canola oil is on the shelves of many major supermarkets. It's in our food supply. In fact, it's ubiquitous in our food supply. From salad dressings to crackers to gluten-free potato chips and pretzels, cereals and beyond, canola oil is everywhere. Little did you know that this was repurposed motor oil. Yes, let me tell you the story of canola oil, and we'll talk specifically about how diets high in canola oil are problematic for increasing your risk of cardiovascular disease, because it turns out that canola oil is enriched in linoleic acid that can increase your LDL cholesterol to become more oxidized or modified, increasing your risk for cardiovascular disease and atherosclerosis. But first, let's talk about the story of canola oil, because these details matter, my friends, because there's no human or animal that would ever be able to physiologically consume large amounts of canola oil because it turns out that canola oil has high amounts of a toxic fatty acid that's 22 carbons long known as uric acid. And it wasn't until scientists in Canada, specifically at University of Manitoba in the 1980s, discovered techniques, distillation techniques and processing techniques to remove this cardiotoxic uric acid out of the oil to make it safe for human consumption. So here's the history and backstory on canola oil. It's derived from the rapeseed and it is classified in the brassica family along with turnips, cabbage, broccoli, and mustard seeds. Since the industrial revolution, rapeseed oil has been an important component of lubricants for ships and steam engines because unlike most other oils, it sticks to wet metal. During World War II, the U.S. built a lot of ships, so it needed lots of rapeseed oil, but couldn't get it from traditional suppliers in Europe and Asia. The Canadian rapeseed industry, which has been relatively small, exploded to fill the gap and played an important role in the Allied naval effort, becoming rich and powerful in the process. But the rapeseed oil demand plummeted when the World War was over, and so began an intensive program to breed rapeseed edible to humans. Hint, remember the story of cottonseed? So we have this waste product, motor oil, and lest I remind you, these are business-oriented people trying to figure out, well, hey, we were growing and selling a lot of this rapeseed oil for the World War, World War II specifically, and we don't know what to do with it now. What if we could just repurpose this and put it in the food supply? That's exactly what Procter & Gamble did with Crisco. As you might remember, cotton seeds are a waste product of cotton, the cotton gin process. These seeds would just pile up outside of the cotton mills. Animals would eat them. Usually they die. And someone said, well, what if we were to squeeze out the oil, which also has a toxin in it? Cottonseed oil has a toxin known as gisopol. It turns out that as you can see this trend here, canola oil has a toxin known as uric acid, meaning that really no animals or humans would ever be able to eat this without extensive processing and technology, which leads us to suggest we probably shouldn't be consuming this, especially in large amounts in ultra processed foods. I mean, all of the uh, meat alternatives, Beyond Burger, Impossible Burger, what do you see? You see canola oil, sometimes cottonseed oil, crackers, cookies, cakes, you know, chips, um, candy, all these things have cottonseed oil and usually some sort of canola oil or, or sunflower oil. So these things, again, are not generally healthy because no human or animal could eat these in the natural state. It depends upon industrial techniques to actually make them modifiable. So before we go on and talk about the history here and talk about the cardiotoxic effects potentially of diets high in linoleic acid and canola oil, I just want to say thank you for being here. Hopefully you're enjoying the content. In today's show, we're talking a lot about metabolic health and cardiometabolic health, a tool that can help you, especially curbing your evening food cravings for unhealthy, hyperpalatable junk food like ice cream, cookies, and crackers is the Berberine Fasting Accelerator by Myoscience. If you're interested in supporting your cardiometabolic health this year, you might want to consider the Berberine Fasting Accelerator in the evening, two to three capsules to help curb those pesky evening food cravings and possibly cravings for alcohol. There there's hundreds of reviews over at myoscience.com. I would encourage you to click the link in the description below. Check out some of those reviews. And if you're interested in supporting your cardiometabolic health, you can save with the code podcast at checkout over at myoscience.com. Okay, so let's go on and talk a little bit more about canola and why it's problematic and specifically talk about the linoleic acid hypothesis of cardiovascular disease. I think this is really important. Now, the take-home message here is when consuming oils, you want to consume fruit oils, not oils from seeds. I think this is the biggest take-home message, and this is where we come into problems. When we have 
say, oils from fruits like a coconut or olive oil, for example, much more healthy compared to, say, cottonseed or canola oil because these are derived from the seeds that have natural anti-nutrients that make the consumer, i.e. you or an animal, sick. And we do not see that in olive oil. We don't see that in coconut oil. We do not see that in most other nut-based oils like pumpkins and so forth. So it's important that that's the take-home message here. Now, as you might see, a common trend in the seed oils is they're enriched in linoleic acid. Now, linoleic acid has several problems. Number one, it prevents the conversion of alpha-linolenic acid into EPA and DHA. I know I'm throwing out a lot of multisyllabic words here, so just lest I remind you that alpha-linolenic acid is a precursor to the long-chain cardioprotective and neurologically protective omega-3 fats, EPA and DHA. And when you consume linoleic acid, it helps to, it actually functions to decrease that conversion of ALA into protective EPA and DHA. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is linoleic acid is highly oxidizable. So when you're cooking with vegetable oil, when it's in your diet, when it's in your body at 98.6 degrees, floating around in a milieu of poor cardiometabolic health, insulin resistance, high levels of sterile inflammation, free radical stress, that can become problematic. And we're going to talk about the specific cardio metabolic links with diets high in linoleic acid oils such as canola oil very soon. But here's a short list of oils that are high in linoleic acid. Sunflower oil contains 66% linoleic acid. Now you might say, well, where do we get sunflower oil? Again, from the seeds. And so we're seeing another seed oil high in a highly oxidizable uh, oil and that can be problematic. Corn oil. Now, you know the problem with corn. Corn is heavily sprayed with atrazine and glyphosate, which is problematic. Now, we have soybean. Again, soybean oil is high in linoleic acid. It's about 55% linoleic acid. Soybeans are heavily sprayed, heavily gen genetically modified. Not good. Cottonseed oil, 53% linoleic acid. And you have canola oil, which is around 21% linoleic acid. Compared to olive oil, it's about 2% linoleic acid. So those are the differences here so that you can better understand. Now, it turns out that corn and soy and sunflower don't have the same level of toxins that cottonseed and canola oil do, um, but just understand that they are enriched in linoleic acid, and these uh, compounds are usually derived from crops, corn and soy, that are heavily sprayed with uh, atrazine and glyphosate, which are very problematic for your health. Okay, so we've done a review on this paper before, but I just thought it would be helpful to talk about it. Now, the title of this, which was published by James Nicola Antonio and James O'Keefe, titled Omega-6 Vegetable Oils as a Driver of Coronary Heart Disease, the Oxidized Linoleic Acid Hypothesis. Now, this article goes into the 26 different ways that diets enriched in these industrial seed oils are problematic for increasing your risk of cardiovascular disease. Now, it turns out there's evidence implicating omega-6 rich vegetable oils as a causative factor in atherosclerosis and coronary heart disease. And they highlight, again, 26 different mechanisms. Now, it turns out when your low-density lipoprotein cholesterol or your LDL, or some people say wrongly bad cholesterol because you need cholesterol, so not all LDL is bad, the problem with LDL is it can become oxidized or modified, and that can contribute to cardiovascular disease and the process known as atherosclerosis. And it's that oxidation or modification step that initiates the process of atherosclerosis. So the thinking goes that if you can reduce the propensity for your LDL to become oxidized or modified, you can prevent the formation of atherosclerotic plaque. And it turns out that by minimizing or reducing the amount of linoleic acid-derived seed oils in your diet might be a key step in helping to prevent this LDL oxidation. Now, of course, we have to reduce free radical stressors. We have to exercise. We have to improve metabolic health. All of these things go into the free radical milieu that might lend your physiology internally to increase the susceptibility of LDL oxidation, but you're not doing yourself any favor by having a diet high in these oils. Now, where would one get these oils in their diet? Well, of course, any packaged food. If you look at the back, I was just at the store the other day. Here's a picture of my daughter. Uh, right next to the vegetable oil was sugar. So the two things that you don't want to be paired together are found at the front end of the grocery store where hundreds of people are shopping every single day. So that's problematic. So minimizing these uh, in, in terms of the cooking process, going back to cooking with butter or beef fat or lamb fat, uh, lard, things like that, that have been used for hundreds of years prior to these industrial made oils, I think is very healthy. And then avoiding the packaged foods, because when you look at the back of chips, 
when you look at crackers, cookies, candy, all of the packaged foods that lead people down the wrong metabolic path are usually enriched in these oils, which are problematic. So that's the take home message. Focus on eating oils derived from fruits, not from seeds. Canola oil is repurposed motor oil. And you do not want to be, con you're not a steam engine, right? You are a human being. And any food that needs to be modified and extensively bred and used with a lot of chemicals to spray on it is probably not fit for human consumption. We don't see these problems eating, say, apples or oranges or bananas or blueberries or uh, walnuts or olives off the tree. We do not need uh, a massive industrial complex to uh, mitigate these foods so that they're safe. And so that's why I'm pushing back against cottonseed as well as canola, because it turns out when you know the history of these, you realize that these are pretty unhealthy uh, based upon uh, the extensive modif modification that they need to remove the anti-nutrients in them that are particularly problematic. So that's it for today's show, my friends. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you did hit that like button, be sure to leave a comment in the comment section below and we'll catch you on a future episode down the road.